Hey guys, Forex here, hope you're all well. What you're looking at in front of you is the Commodore Amiga 1200 I repaired in a previous video. Now, as you can see, it's working perfectly fine now. It wasn't a tricky repair, um, it was just the phono um, had a dry joint on the left channel, so it was missing its left channel. And the floppy drive was uh, really dirty inside, so it was failing to read games. Um, but give it a clean and it fires straight back into life if you want to watch that video I'll put a link in the description but yeah today what I'm going to do is I'm going to retro bright because as you can see it does look uh, a little yellowed so yeah if you give me five minutes to set up I'll crack on with that now to remove the top cover I need to remove some screws off the back and there's six of them there's one here 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 and the final one is here but what I'm also going to do is I'm going to remove the two screws that actually hold the floppy drive in there as well um, it just saved me flipping it back over and doing it later when I want to remove the floppy drive so I'll get those screws out and then flip it over and take the top lid off. Now to remove the top lid there's a technique you have to do. So all you do is just grab it at the front like this. And you move it forward and you rest it uh, at the back like that. Now the reason you've got to do that is because you've got the um, power floppy drive and HDD um, indicator LEDs there. And you will need to remove them. So what I need to do next is move the keyboard forward, uh, pull it back a little bit, uh, and then I can see where those LEDs plug into. Uh, and I'm just going to pull that out, and I should be able to pull that through, and that's the top lid removed. What I want to do next is remove the keyboard. Now that's not too difficult to do. Um, you've got a little ribbon here and the way you remove it is you come along and you take a pick and you lift up one side of the ribbon like that and you do the same on the opposite side of the plastic connector and then you can take the ribbon out uh, and then you can remove the whole of the keyboard. What I want to do next is remove the floppy drive. Now I've already removed the two screws from the back. So I'm just going to remove its power connector, which is here. It's a little bit, got a little clip on this so it can be a little bit, there you go, a little bit of pain. <laughs> and remove the actual floppy ribbon cable. And then I need to remove the final screw that's here. And then I'll be able to take out the floppy drive we're almost there when it comes to the bottom portion of the Amiga 1200 all we need to do now is remove this screw and then we can pull out the whole of the shield and motherboard together that's the lowercase strip what I need to do now is just remove one simple thing from the top of the case uh, and then I can get these in the bath, soak in and give them a clean before I retro bright them. Now there's just one thing I need to remove off the top of the case and it's the power floppy drive and hard drive LED PCB. Now to do that it's very easy, just remove this screw, remove this screw uh, and this simple PCB will just lift straight off. And then that's the top of the case done, I can get it in soak and clean. Now comes the fun part, I've got to remove every single key uh, from the keyboard, shouldn't be too difficult, I mean some of them you can just grab them like this left arrow key and you just pull them off like that, just make sure you don't lose a spring. So what I'll do is I'll get every single key off the keyboard um, and then come back. As you can see all the keys are off, oh, there's a spring there, I forgot to put it in there. 
what I've done is I've put all the springs and the tensioning bars in there so I don't lose any of them. What I'll do as well is I'll give that a squirt of WD-40 uh, and then give it a shake. Um, what I'm going to do now is get the keys in soak uh, with the outer case. Uh, while I'm there I'll give this a wipe down and a clean as well because there are some dust bunnies there. So yeah, now comes the cleaning process. As you can see, I've got the upper and lower case soaking in the bath and I've got the keys soaking in this little tub. So what I'll do is I'll leave them in there for half an hour and then come back and give them a good scrub. That's all the keys cleaned. They're ready for retro brighten now. I've cleaned the keys, um, I've started the first batch of retro brighten the keys now, I'm probably going to have to do this in two or three batches um, because I can't get all the keys in there uh, at the same time um, but yeah it should only take a, a couple of hours to do each batch so I'm looking at what six hours to do this lot hopefully so yeah I'll get this in the retro bright box and we can get retro brighten these keys and um, we're ready to retro bright the first lot of keys so what I'll do is I'll put the keys just there ready to go as you can see I'm going to shine that massive right in there I'll shut the lid I'll turn it on and I'll give you a little glimpse of what it looks like in there oops <laughs> yeah trippy <laughs> So yeah, I'll leave that in there for about an hour, come back, have a look at it, see what it looks like. Probably uh, move the cream around on the keys. Uh, and then hopefully, we should get the keys done um, in batches of three. Uh, it should take about six hours, hopefully. So yeah, I'll let this go, uh, and then come back. Now that the first batch of keys have been retro-brighted, I thought I'd show you uh, what they actually look like so this one has been retro brighted uh, and this one hasn't and you can see the difference between the grey keys and this one has not been retro brighted yet but this one has and you can clearly see the difference between the white keys <laughs> you never ever guess what I did um, to coat the keys in um, peroxide I used a glove um, and then once I finished I took the glove off and when I took it off it turned inside out and I forgot all about that and then went to retro bright some more keys put the glove on uh, and I was like why is my fingers stinging a little bit yeah <laughs> I turned the glove inside out with peroxide in what an idiot yeah be careful guys because this thing stings a bit <laughs> idiot now that's the keyboard keys and the keyboard cleaned and retro brighted and as you can see uh, it's come out pretty damn well now in total the whole of the keys uh, took about six hours uh, to retro bright uh, the only reason that is because I did them in batches I did three batches of them uh, and it was two hours a piece so uh, in total uh, it took six hours to retro bright all the keys but yeah it was six hours well spent because as you can see they look pretty damn good so what I'm going to do now is get on to retro bright in the upper and lower case so I'll crack on with that and then come back Before I start retro brightening the actual top of the case, what I want to do is remove the Amiga badge because um, I don't know how this is going to react to the peroxide being on it. So, yeah, I'm just going to peel this off uh, and then I'm ready to start retro brightening the upper and lower case. So now I'm ready to retro-bright the top case um, and I'll show you what I'm going to do. 
Um, all I'm going to do is take this B Blonde. Now you can get this from Wilco's in the UK. Um, I'll put the price down below because I forgot how much I paid for it. But it's not it's not too expensive. Uh, and all you do is you take this, you take a brush and you paint it um, onto the case, and then you wrap it in cling film. I think you guys call that saran wrap in the US. Um, and then you do all you do then is put it in the box and you leave it in there for a couple of hours and you start the retro bright procedure and hopefully after a couple of hours it comes out looking nice and new so yeah I'll get paint in the peroxide onto this case I'll get it wrapped up in cling film and then we'll put it in the retro bright box that's the upper case covered in peroxide and wrapped in cling film Let's get this in the retro bright box. As you can see, the case is in the retro bright box. Shut the lid. Power on our grow light. Show you inside. Oh, that's uh, <laughs> looking a bit trippy in there. So yeah, what I'll do is I'll leave that for an hour. Come back, massage the peroxide around. Uh, leave it for another hour and then see what it looks like and you know if it needs uh, another hour or two I'll do it again so yeah I'll let that go and then come back when it's done as you can see that's the top case retro brighted uh, and it's come out looking rather rather sweet I might put the badge back on the case now it took three hours to get the case to look this good uh, in the retro bright box the reason for that is because it had yellowed from the front to the back so it wasn't uniformly yellowed um, I did two hours on the front um, and then when I took it out I noticed there, there was still yellow on the front bit here so I did it an hour with it standing up like this facing the UV light and yeah it's took care of it really really nice uh, this thing looks new I can't wait to get it back together it's gonna look absolutely amazing but yeah what I need to do now is exactly the same on the bottom of the case now that shouldn't take too long because obviously that wasn't in direct sunlight so I'm hoping that'll take an hour or at most a couple of hours so yeah I'll get that all sorted out and we'll get it in the retro bright box and give that a retro bright as well That's the bottom of the case, all covered in peroxide and wrapped in cling film. Let's get this in the retro bright box. Bottom of the case is in the retro bright box. Let's shut the lid and power on. A quick look again. Yeah, that looks a, <laughs> it's a bit trippy. <laughs> So yeah, again, I'll let this go for an hour, come back, massage the peroxide, uh, let it go for another hour, see what it looks like, and then uh, if it looks good, I'll take it out, give it a wash, get all the peroxide off, or uh, if it doesn't, I uh, might just uh, leave it in there, let it go for another hour. So um, yeah, be back when it's done. And that's the bottom of the case, retro brighted. As you can see, I stuck the stickers back on. The only one I left on while I was retro brighting was the original warranty sticker. Uh, now I didn't want to peel that off because it's it's a bit of history, um, but I left it on there while I retro brighted it, and it didn't do any damage to it. It was already looking in this shape anyway. But as you can see, it's looking rather nice. Um, top, bottom and the keys came out looking great so yeah what I'm going to do now is get this all back together and we should have a very nice looking Amiga 1200 and um, we're all back together and as you can see I think the retro brighting has been a complete success <laughs> it looks absolutely mint uh, this thing looks like I've just opened it up on Christmas Day 
Um, it's come out looking absolutely brilliant. So what I'll do now is I'll give you a before and after shot uh, and then I'll come back and wrap up the video. So yeah guys, there you go. As you can see it's playing a bit of Alien Breed 2. So yeah, I hope you liked the video guys. Please give it a big thumbs up. Like, comment, subscribe, all the usual stuff. And as always, I'll catch you on the next one. Look at this thing. Absolutely stunning. Catch you next time, guys.